Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. So we have one plus three r plus six r squared plus 10 r to the third power plus dot dot dot, and we're going to be evaluating the sum, where r is between negative one and one so that we can get a convergent series. And it's also given with sigma as n times n plus one divided by two times r to the power n minus one. So what kind of numbers are we dealing with? Well, if you look at the numbers one, three, six, and 10, they should make sense to you. And we're going to you know, evaluate those numbers, but we have to use something that we already know, right? And that's going to be our famous arithmetic series, right? Well, did I say arithmetic? It should be geometric. Okay, great. So it should look like one plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. So this is what we know, right? We know that this sum is convergent if r is between negative one and one, and it is going to equal one over one minus r. So by using s as our reference point, we're gonna be able to evaluate this. But what do these numbers mean? Like look at three, six, and 10. How do they, uh, how are they obtained? Where do they come from, right? Well, they're called triangular numbers. If you noticed the expression here, n times n plus one divided by two, basically gives you a triangular number. For n equals one, it would give you one. For n equals two, it would give you a three. But three can also be written as one plus two, right? That's what triangular numbers are. Six can be written as one plus two plus three, and 10 can be written as one plus two plus three plus four. So that's pretty much how our series goes every time we're adding another number, so we're talking about sums of consecutive integers here. The question is, how do we obtain that sum from S, right? That's the question. Well, here's what we need to think about. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the next page. So I have this sum, which I called S, right? One plus R plus R squared plus R cubed plus R to the fourth. You can stop somewhere, you know. Now this is S. Okay, what happens if I wanted to add another r to it, right? Since I do need the r three times, right? My, my triangular numbers are one, three, six, and 10. So I would definitely need to add more r to this, right? So I'm gonna need to add two r to this. Obviously that's gonna give me three r when we add it to one r. Uh, well, I, I do need more r squared, obviously, right? In this case, I, I would need six r squared, but to be able to get that, I need to add consecutive integers. So I, I'm basically gonna be needing two r squared as well to make it six, but that we also need to add one more to this, right? So that's gonna be three r squared. So if you continue, this is just gonna be two r cubed plus two r to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. Now, what about the next one? Well, here I'm getting one plus two plus three times the quantity r squared. And I need the same thing here. So I'm gonna add three r cubed to this by all, by I also need four r cubed here, right? Because I do need one plus two plus three plus four to get 10 r to the third power. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And then I'm of course gonna be adding everything else here because we have to have all these terms consecutively. So we're not missing anything. And then obviously that's gonna be followed by four r to the fourth, so on and so forth. So hopefully you got the idea if we add all of these, and the next one is gonna be five r to the fourth, so on and so forth. Okay, but how do we get all these terms, right? That's the question, and of course this needs to continue. And when we add all of these up, we're gonna get what we need, because this is gonna give us one plus three r plus six r squared plus 10 r to the third power plus 15 r to the fourth power, which is another triangular number, by the way, and this is what we need. So. But if you look at the top row, it is equal to S, right? This is S, great. What about the bottom one? Well, the bottom one, can we make it look like S? Absolutely. If you just take out a two R, then you're gonna be getting one plus R plus R squared, which means that this is actually two R times S. What about the third row? Well, if you take out a three R squared, then you're gonna be getting the same S again. So it's gonna be three R squared times S, and then it's gonna be followed by, I should put an equal sign here and here, and here, it's gonna be followed by what? Four R cubed multiplied by S, and then this is going to be five R to the fourth times S, and of course, this is going to continue as well. So our sum is actually equal to a bunch of other sums that vary every time, but they follow a certain pattern. So for my sum, what I can write is then, I have something like this, S plus two R S plus 
3r squared s plus 4r cubed s plus 5r to the fourth s and so on and so forth. Obviously, I think we get the pattern here, right? I think this is enough to see the pattern. So let's go ahead and take out s. Why? Because it's a common factor, right? Well, when you take out s, what are you going to be getting, right? That's another interesting part of this is it's not going to be super obvious like the 1 plus r plus r squared, but we'll get to that. So if you take out s, you, you should be getting something like 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared plus 4r cubed plus 5r to the fourth, so on and so forth. Okay, great. We know that this is going to converge, so we can easily evaluate the sum if we can, you know, turn this into something that we know. Okay, what is our original sum? Well, I mean the sum that we know. It's 1 plus r plus r squared. So we have to have consecutive powers of r with no coefficients. But every time we're getting more and more. So there's actually two ways to go about it. And I'd like to show you both. I hope you don't mind. I don't want to keep this video too long, but let me go ahead and show you both approaches. One of the approaches is actually going to be just add this like, so, okay, so this is what I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be writing 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth. And you know, this is going to continue. And then just shift it over and start with r. That's going to be r plus r squared plus r to the third plus r to the fourth. And then just shift it again and start this time with r squared. You get the idea? r to the fourth dot dot dot. And then I'll start with r cubed and so on and so forth. Now what this is going to give me is I'll get one. Let's go ahead and kind of circle things and show you. This is going to give me 1. This is going to give me 2r. This is going to give me 3r squared. And I'll be getting 4r cubed and then 5r to the fourth. And that's basically what I need. And then whatever that sum is, I can just go ahead and multiply by s. And I already know what s is equal to, so we can put it all together. Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate this. Now, what is the first sum? Well, this is the first one is obviously s, right? So this is equal to s. What about the second one? Well, the second one is just s multiplied by r. So I can write it as sr. And the next one is going to be s times r squared. Notice that if I pull out an r squared, I'm going to be getting s. From there in, s, s r cubed, and so on and so forth. So if I, I'm able to add all of these, that's going to give me this part. And then I'll multiply by s. Let's not forget, we have to multiply that by s as well. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate the sum here. Well, this sum is going to look like s plus sr plus sr squared plus sr cubed, dot, dot, dot. And then if I pull out an s here, that's going to give me another s, which is kind of interesting, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. Therefore, this sum is actually going to be s squared. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Now, so I was able to find that sum, but again, we need to multiply this by s. So what happens if you do, because we have an extra s here? Well, this is s squared, right? So what is s times s squared? Well, that should be easy. It's s cubed, right? s times s squared is equal to s to the third power. Great. So that's our answer. But what is s equal to? Well, s is equal to 1 over 1 minus r. So my answer is going to be 1 over 1 minus r quantity cubed. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. But I told you that I was going to show you the second way. And let me do it, as promised. So the second method is actually real cool because it involves some calculus. All right, great. So here's our second method for finding the sum inside the parentheses, which will be then multiplied by s to get the answer. So what are we talking about? Well, as you know, s is equal to 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. And then dot, dot, dot. I don't really need to write the fourth power. You get the idea. Now, remember, the sum that I'm trying to evaluate looks like this, right? 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared. What does that remind you? Look at the numbers. I do have 3, which is 1 more than the 2. What does that remind you? That should remind you the power rule. Exactly. The derivative. Okay. So if I do the derivative of s with respect to r... Yes, exactly. You heard it right. If we're using a little bit of calculus here, you're going to be getting something like this. The derivative of 1 is 0, obviously. That's a constant. The derivative of r is 1. Then you get 2r. Then you get 3r squared. Dot, dot, dot. Exactly. That's what you're getting. Well, you, you evaluated this sum as s squared, but it happens to equal s prime, which is fine. No, so this sum is going to be multiplied by s. So you're basically talking about something like, you know, S is being 1 over 1 minus R. So what I need to do is 
I need to calculate the derivative of s, so let's go ahead and differentiate this. But to make the differentiation easier, unless you use a rule for 1 over f of x, something like that, let's go ahead and write it as 1 minus r to, to the power negative 1. Now, when you differentiate by using the chain rule, obviously, you're going to move for power rule, you're going to move to negative 1, you're going to reduce the power, and of course, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of 1 minus r with respect to r, and that's going to be negative 1. And the negatives are going to negate each other, and we're going to be ending up with 1 minus r to the power negative 2, which means that the sum that we were trying to evaluate is equal to 1 over 1 minus r quantity squared. And remember, we're supposed to multiply this by s, and that's going to give us the answer. And here is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.